Technology, philosophy, and the future. Today I'm going to talk a bit about H2M. Now you've probably heard of H2O. Everyone's familiar with H2O. H2O is water. But today we are living in the world of H2M. And H2M, if you think about it, is human, human, machine. In the same way that H2O is two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, H2M is two atoms of human and one atom of machine. This is what I mean. When you think about what we generate as humans when we use generative AI is that it's one part human, which is us, our contribution, our prompt, in some cases, our editing, in some cases, all sorts of things that we add to the prompt itself, add to the output itself. That is the single atom of human. And then we have the machine, which is the single atom of machine. But in this little cluster of atoms that I'm talking about, in the H2M cluster of atoms, there is a third human. And it's not a single human. It is multiple humans. In fact, it is most of humanity. In fact, it is whatever humanity has created and exists within the generative AI interface, within the large language model. Because if you think about it, what is a large language model other than a ton of human-generated content in a giant database? And this ton of human-generated content in the giant database, the large language model, is content that human beings have already created. These are things that have already been written or designed or created by human beings. So when you're talking about creating things with generative AI, what you're actually creating is something that has two human atoms and one machine atom. And the two human atoms are you as the one who's creating the prompt. And the machine taking the rest of humanity, the other human atom, is actually the human output that was put into the large language model. So when you are creating something with generative AI, it's human, manipulated human, because the machine is manipulating the AI or the content of the large language model and machine. So the output that you're getting is H2M. It is you plus augmented humanity plus the machine. And if you ask me, isn't that almost like a new life form? Isn't that almost like taking ourselves and augmenting ourselves to the nth degree. It's part of the cyborgization of technology, of humanity. I mean, when was the last time you actually spent time without your smartphone, without your connection to the rest of the world, without your connection to the rest of humanity? Probably hardly ever at all. In fact, there have been studies shown that if people, people's, smartphones are taken away from them, some of them actually go into a catatonic state. I've said this before on many of my previous shows, but we are already androids. And we right now live in a symbiotic relationship with these machines. And when it comes to generative AI, we're actually winning because it's two human atoms 
and a machine atom. Whereas with our relationship with a smartphone is man and machine. Whereas when you add generative AI, you're bringing in additional bits of humanity. Sure, it's been put together by a machine, but you're creating, you're actually outnumbering the machine by bringing in generative AI. So if you think about it, generative AI is actually better for humanity because it's two atoms of humanity to one atom of machine. And what we're generating out of that is incredibly amazing. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future. Pixels and philosophies merge and mold a future untold, unseen.